Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. One of the things I just love about the computer industry is the naming conventions. You can put your EK Predator cooler inside your Acer Predator desktop. One of the best GPUs on the market shares a name with the world's most mundane display resolution. And the industry as a whole has more references to force than the entire expanded universe. So then, it was a huge surprise to no one when AMD continued this proud tradition of uncreative naming by designating their lineup of new Ryzen CPUs as Ryzen 3, 5, and 7. The same numbers that Team Blue started using all those years ago. But, to AMD's credit, they've gone a different direction with what those numbers actually mean. Starting at the bottom, we've got Ryzen 3. So I would hardly call this bottom low end. Every Ryzen 3 chip comes with four cores and four threads, similar to an Intel Core i5. A 65 watt TDP means that the small included Wraith Stealth heatsink that looks somewhat similar to an Intel stock solution should do you nicely if you're not interested in overclocking. A Ryzen 3 will run you between $109 and $129, depending on exactly which model you choose. Stepping up, we've got Ryzen 5, which has both 4-core 8-thread and 6-core 12-thread models, positioning them actually against mainstream-grade Core i7s, except at the very high end. So that one is simple enough, but the cooler situation here is a little confusing. The lowest end 1400 gets the same stealth cooler as before. Then, the other chips get the beefier Wraith Spire, except for the top-end 6-core 1600X, which has no bundled cooler at all, and a higher 95-watt TDP. Ah! So Ryzen 5 will run you between 169 and 189 for 4 cores, or 219 to 249 if you want something with 6. At the top of the mainstream stack is the Ryzen 7 lineup, all of which are 8-core, 16-thread affairs. Again, here, you'll see TDPs between 65 and 95 watts, and only the lowest-end, non-X Ryzen 7 1700 includes a Spire LED cooler. Though with that said, I'd expect many of the folks buying the top-tier ones to want high-performance aftermarket cooling anyway. If you pull the trigger on a Ryzen 7, expect to pay between $329 and $499. But wait, there's more. That's not the end of it. For the first time in a decade, AMD is finally competing on the super high end as well, with a product called Ryzen Threadripper. This dramatically named processor is based on their server lineup and comes in 8, 12, and 16 core variants, all with simultaneous multi-threading and 64 PCI Express lanes. These puppies produce copious amounts of heat. You will need to provide your own excellent cooler. The CPUs are physically massive with over 4,000 LGA style contacts and with pricing from $549 to $999, they are expensive. Though, it's still cheaper than Intel's closest equivalents. So then, which one should you choose if you're interested? Well, believe it or not, if you won't be doing anything more demanding than gaming, Ryzen 3 is probably an excellent bet, as there are hardly any games out there today that can substantially take advantage of more than four cores. Though with that said, the extra threads and cores of a Ryzen 5 might make sense for you if you're a light content creator or a game streamer. If you're a content creator who's doing more heavy lifting, such as video editing, a higher-end Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7 is a great bet for you. As for the Super Deluxe Threadripper, well, that one makes sense if you need high-speed quad-channel memory, tons of cores for virtualization, and PCI Express lanes out the wazoo for GPU compute, uh, high-end networking, or like crazy storage setups. Regardless of what chip you pick, though, there are a few things to know. Well, two. One, every Ryzen SKU is unlocked and overclockable out of the box, so you won't be paying an Intel-style premium just to tweak the multiplier in your BIOS. And two, 
Ryzen isn't quite as strong in applications like games that skew more heavily towards single core performance due to its lower per clock performance compared to Intel. However, many tests have shown that Ryzen is a suitable performer in many of those applications and actually a better value for multi-threaded applications. So if you're spending a lot of time in Adobe Premiere or streaming in HD, you might be pleasantly surprised. So let us know in the comments then, have you taken the Ryzen plunge yet? What are your thoughts so far? And if you have, why are you watching this video? You already bought it. Go play some games or edit some videos. On the subject of playing games, are you tired of playing beat the clock because you're a busy freelancer? Well, this episode is brought to you by FreshBooks. It's challenging to be self-employed, but with the growth of the internet, there's never been more opportunities to do it. And to meet this need, FreshBooks created their cloud accounting software that's designed for the way you work. It's the simplest, easiest way to be more productive, more organized, and most importantly, get paid faster. You can create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. You can set up online payments with just a couple of clicks to get paid up to four days faster. You you can track expenses with the full featured mobile app available for iOS or Android, and you can see when your client has seen your invoice to put an end to the guessing games. FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial to our viewers, so to claim it, go to freshbooks.com slash techquickie and enter techquickie in the how did you hear about us section. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked, you can hit that button. If you disliked, well, there's the other button. You should check out our other channels. You should comment with video suggestions, and you should subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our videos.